Hey, hello friends and welcome back to another video of this series. In this video, we are going to talk about capacitors. Now, capacitor is one of the very critical component when it comes to a hardware design. So any hardware design in general, you will have a lot of passives and these passives are capacitor, resistors, diode, transistors. And uh, to understand or to design something from scratch, you have to understand how these capacitors, how these resistors or the passive as a whole works. And in this video series, we are creating this wonderful hardware from scratch. If you have not checked the other videos, go and check out. If you see over here, we have all these capacitors, okay? So whenever you see any circuit, you will see whenever there is an input side, input side of the hardware, okay? So whenever there is an input side, let's say this is 3.3 going to the ESP, we have this capacitor connected over here, then, uh, here if we see this is the st microcontroller we have this capacitor connected to the 3.3 line and similarly you have adjacent two more capacitors connected and one is a bigger capacitor the others are the smaller capacitor in terms of size so bulk uh, capacitors then decoupling capacitors even you have something like a high precision uh, capacitance capacitors which are uh, these tantalum capacitors if you see we give 3.8 volts to our gsm modem and uh, before going ahead with the video, I would like to thank Altium for sponsoring this video series. So Altium is one of the best PCB designing software and Altium offers Altium 365, which gives you a flexibility to design a, a electronic product from scratch to the production where multiple stakeholders can work together on that project, be it the requirement, be it the schematic, be it the bomb management, be it the board design or the QC testing everybody will be able to work on the same platform seamlessly if you want to learn more about it you can go and watch this video i have a link in the description you can go and check that link so capacitors are passive electronic components used to store and release electrical energy in terms of application uh, capacitors application depends on the characteristics like capacitance voltage rating dielectric and size when it comes to a low power device let's say the hardware which we are making so we will be using this surface mount ceramic capacitors tantalum capacitors then you have electrolytic capacitors and uh, then your aluminium electrolytic or uh, pcb mount electrolytic capacitors so these are the common ones that goes on the pcbs when it comes to the other ones they have their application someone is having in the power supplies and all high voltage systems okay but we are not uh, uh, going to discuss in detail of this we'll be just covering few of these capacitor types their ratings so to start with let's talk about the ceramic capacitors so ceramic capacitors is also known as like multi-layer uh, ceramic capacitors so the applications are for decoupling and filtering so they are used to reduce uh, uh, noise and then voltage smoothing in power supply circuits they are used for oscillators and timers as well. And these are very common in timing circuits, clock generation and frequency filtering. And they offer a high frequency application use case where it is ideal for high frequency circuits in RF systems like radio transmitters and receivers. In terms of sizes, uh, they come in two packages like one is surface mount and the other one is through hole. So these are the surface mount that directly goes and shoulders on the PCBs and these are the through holes. Uh, in terms of the sizes, it starts from 040 to 0603. Even you have uh, 0201 as well. So these are typically uh, the different sizes that are available. And here you can see the uh, series and the size. So this size is 6063, 1005. So if you can see the, the length and breadth is what defines the dimension of any SMT components, uh, passive components. Okay. Now, in terms of rating, typically it rates from one nanofarad and it goes to some 100 microfarad. So these are the typical values you will be able to get some specialized uh, ceramic capacitors which will be rated for a higher capacitance, but these are the typical values. In terms of the voltage rating, you will get 6.3 to 50 and even some 100 uh, volts versions are also available. In terms of dielectric, uh, capacitors are classified or the ceramic capacitors are classified as class A, class 1 and class 2 class 3 in class 1 you have the stable and low loss capacitors whereas in in case of class 2 and class 3 you have high capacitance and these are more uh, temperature dependent 
The second one is the electrolytic capacitors. These are basically used in your power supply filtering, uh, where you smooth out the voltage fluctuation and provide stable DC output. These are also used as energy storage in power supplies, where uh, this store energy is used to supply uh, current during any voltage dips. And uh, it is used for low frequency filtering, commonly in audio equipments and low frequency circuits. In terms of common sizes, this comes in two versions, which is through hole and SMD. In, in through hole, uh, the typical available is like 5 mm to 35 mm diameter. Okay. And uh, as a height, it come, goes from uh, 10 mm to 50 mm height as well. So these are the typical dimensions. In terms of SMD versions, uh, those are available, but this, those are very rare or less common in terms of uh, the SMT, if you see, this is what that goes on the PCB directly and this goes on the through hole. In terms of capacitance, it ranges from 1 microfarad and goes till 100k microfarad. So higher capacitance than most of the other capacitors. And typically the voltage ranges between 6.3 and it goes upward of 450. Even there are 600 volt uh, electrolytic capacitors exist, but those are for specialized use cases. In terms of leakage current, they exhibit higher leakage compared to other types, but are acceptable in many power circuits due to their high capacitance value. Uh, and these capacitors, so if we talk about the ceramic capacitors, which we saw, right, there is no orientation. Okay, whereas in this case, the, you need to you need to uh, mount it in a proper orientation. That means it's a polarized one where you have the positive and the negative terminal. And if you see over here, right, the shorter length leg is the negative terminal and you have this as this indication okay the next one is tantalum capacitors so these are one of a special type of capacitors uh, uh, that are also used for decoupling uh, and uh, it it is a low voltage high capacitance application used in dc dc converters power supply filters and portable electronics like smartphone tablets and uh, for the decoupling use right it is used for uh, stable performance in sensitive circuits like precision analog or digital devices and where you have a space constraint okay and you need a higher capacitance in a compact size with a reliability you can go for it uh, in terms of common sizes uh, it comes with uh, smt packages and also the through hole packages okay uh, in terms of rating it rates from uh, 0.1 microfarad to 100 microfarad and typically it is available in lower capacitance value than electrolytic voltage rating is from 4 volt to 50 volts this is also a polarized capacitors where you have uh, these, these dark lines which you see right so this defines your anode and uh, it has an orientation okay uh, in terms of failure mode so whenever this is getting failed right it will uh, it will basically short circuit that line that means it will fire it will provide you a continuous path so make sure uh, you are uh, you are basically very uh, very attentive in terms of uh, designing on choosing this tantalum capacitors in our hardware as i showed right we have used this tantalum capacitors okay so if you see the size compared to any other capacitors is big okay but uh, the good the good use case of this is uh, it provides you with a stable performance in sensitive circuits okay so this is one of the key area uh, where uh, these are being used and it is it is a little costlier than when it comes to a ceramic capacitors film capacitor uh, these are used in signal processing where you are doing audio or signal processing due to uh, circuits due to their low distortion and stable performance it is also used as a filtering in ac power supplies it is used in uh, uh, circuits where you require accurate capacitance value and stability over time such as clock oscillator and timers so it offers a very accurate capacitance value and uh, the common sizes it comes with through hole so these are the all through hole options which you see right there are uh, smd packages also uh, which are very less likely and also it comes in a deep package as well the capacitance ranges from 1 nanofarad and it goes to 10 microfarad higher capacitance versions are available but they are very rare uh, when it comes to the voltage range it ranges from 50 it goes to 250 volts so we talked about the four different types of capacitors now let's see the most common function of these capacitors okay so if we talk about uh, bulk capacitors 
So we based on the function, right? So whenever we refer to any hardware based on the function of that capacitor, we say, okay, these capacitors are bulk capacitors, or these capacitors are bypass or de decoupling capacitors, or these are the filtering capacitors. Okay. So let's see, uh, let's see the primary purpose, right? So the bulk capacitor stores charges to handle low transient. So wherever, let's say there is a voltage, sudden voltage dip. Okay. And this bulk capacitor will make sure the output is uniform. So whenever the dip is there in the voltage or uh, the lower spike is there, right? So these capacitors will, will make sure you have a steady output supply or the power supply is smooth enough, okay? And the typical location in the hardware is near power entry, example, after regulator, okay? After like uh, LDOs and all. And uh, the capacitance range is like 10 microfarad and it can go till 1000 microfarad okay electrolytic uh, in terms of key function it acts as a reservoir as i said to maintain voltage during heavy load so even let's say you have a hardware right suddenly you started driving uh, uh, let's say a buzzer okay so the moment that buzzer beeps right you will see there would be a sudden demand okay of power uh, the current right now the voltage will dip slightly now this bulk capacitor will make sure that dip or uh, the, the dip which is there right is being compensated okay now um, loosely you will be using the same term for decoupling bypass and bulk because uh, they, they 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 basically solves for the same purpose okay now bypass capacitors they divert high frequency noise to ground and it is placed between vcc and ground to circuit section and the typical capacitance range is from uh, uh, 0 0.01 microfarad to 0.1 microfarad ceramic type, okay? It eliminates any AC noise, especially in analog or mixed circuit. Op-amp supply uh, pins. So these are basically the examples. So in op-amps, right, you'll be using capacitors uh, between the power line and the ground so that you can uh, basically nullify the high frequency noise. Now this is the decoupling capacitor which we keep on talking, right? So it isolates the IC from the power supply noise. So right, it is placed right next to each IC's VCC and ground pin. It ranges from 0.1 microfarad to 10 microfarad. So these are the typical values. Even uh, there are 22 microfarad, 40 microfarad. You will see those uh, being used as a decoupling capacitor because it it balances between your uh, uh, bypass where the high frequency noise gets eliminated and also this decoupling uh, uh, functionality is being retained and uh, the key function is to maintain a local voltage integrity during the ic switching so basically whenever you have your uh, transistors or or any any power supplies right certain power supply requirements and also this basically makes sure uh, uh, the voltage uh, integrity is there and you get a smooth uh, input to the ICs. Then the filters are there. So we are not talking about filters. So filters are basically uh, the, these blocks, the specific frequency range. It's a part of signal or power filter circuits and capacitance varies based on the filter. Okay. The type of frequencies to eliminate. It is used in uh, low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass, ripple suppression. And the example use cases are for your SMPS output, audio filters, RF circuits. Now, whenever the voltage supply goes to any IC, so if you see over here, right, you have these capacitors being placed. Now, there are two capacitors, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, then there is the third one, which is 10 microfarad, which seems to be a tantalum capacitors. And here, this is ADXL345, uh, which is which is a accelerometer, okay? And uh, yeah, so whenever uh, there is a high frequency noise coming in right on this line, so this will make sure it is getting suppressed. Okay, it's not getting passed to the IC. So let's say here you have uh, five volt coming, right? And uh, on this, you have something other things also connected on this uh, supply line. Suddenly the five volt dips to 4.9 volt. Okay, so now this capacitor acts as a reservoir. So this will make sure whatever the output over here, right, is five volts. So this is what we were talking about, right? So if you have any sort of a ripple or a noise or the voltage level dips, okay? So this makes sure decoupling capacitors make sure you have a steady output. 
and wherever you will see right so this is the vcap 1 vcap 2 okay and uh, this here you have this 2.2 microfarad connected okay and these are the so let me show you so here you have uh, all your these vdd lines right so these vdd lines are being connected to 3.3 and just near to these vdd lines you will have this uh, capacitors okay decoupling capacitors okay and these are all like 0.1 microfarad now in terms of what would be the voltage rating right so if it is the 3.3 line you can go like 10 volts would be fine 16 volts would be fine so whatever the voltage input is you can um, take anything double or more than that okay so you can go for a 10 volt or you can go for a 16 volt okay and uh, yeah so in any of uh, the hardware so this is the voltage regulator if you see the input you have a decoupling capacitor of one microfarad now the question is why one microfarad right so as we said uh, you can go to the typical application circuit of this hardware and see what is for that voltage level right uh, what is the uh, decoupling capacitors they are using okay and same this is for spi flash here you have 0.1 microfarad okay now this uh, microfarad 0.11 or let's say 2.2 somewhere you will see 10 microfarad okay here if you see so this is the part from um, uh, simcom ec200 uh, design guideline here you have 10 picofarad 33 picofarad 100 nanofarad right so it's basically a delta sort of a coupling uh, 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 circuitry okay now let's see like why these uh, different values are there right so decoupling capacitors are typically chosen in values from 0.1, 10 microfarad, 2.2 microfarad because they serve for different roles in filtering noise across a wide frequency range. Here, why these specific values are commonly used? So when you talk about, uh, let's say, a 0.1 microfarad, right, which is 100 nanofarad, okay, the, here you have this high frequency noise filtering. So whenever you have a high frequency noise, you can go for 0.1 and uh, this noise ranges from 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz the placement is closest to the ic power pins and uh, the common use is basically it removes the fast transient and high frequency switching noise that causes from the adjacent uh, mcu fpgas EAs, or memory chips okay so when you design a hardware there are multiple components right and those can induce those uh, switching noises okay because of the switching noises, it can uh, basically impact your delegate uh, ICs. So you can go for a 0.1 microfarad. Now, when it comes to 2.2 microfarad, it's a mid frequency noise separation where it offers for a lower megahertz range. It is also placed near the IC, but slightly farther than 0.1 microfarad. That means if you have a combination of these two, right? So you have to make sure this is being placed near to that pin followed by this so what does it mean right let's say uh, let's say this as an example right so you have this 0 0.1 0 0.1 and then you have this 10 okay so you have since uh, here both the values are same but let's say this was 0 0.1 microfarad this was 10 microfarad okay this 10 microfarad right so you have to make sure this is nearer to the to the vcc pin followed by that okay So near, near the IC but slightly far than 0.1 microfarad provides additional stability and smooth out power fluctuation in analog and RF circuits. Now whenever uh, anything beyond uh, 10 or 10, right, you can designate that as a bulk capacitor or the bulk energy storage or a low frequency filtering. And this filtering is basically in kilohertz and goes till megahertz. At power supply entry point or major power distribution node, Okay, so what does it mean, right? So let's say you have a circuit and uh, from the from that power rail, rail right, you are distributing that uh, it goes to three different ICs, right? So you can put it at the junction of that point, okay? So that it can uh, handle any sort of a transient requirement of any of those uh, lines, okay? So it handles transient current surge and stabilizes power rails. So I hope you were able to understand the core concepts of the capacitors and how we use and do share this video to your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.